This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes.
This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes.
This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Fires across the middle. Sean Terry makes the catch. Slams on the brakes. Reverses left across the 20. He's to the 15, down to the 10. Spins off a tackler. Terry makes the catch at the 45. A little spin move, trying to get away. Still on his feet. Spins again and again. Driving forward across midfield. 45, 40. Are you kidding me? Sean Terry to the 30. Cuts right. He'll take it to the 20. To the 10. Right up the middle. Big hole. Tyler Carmen across the 30. He's to the 25, 20. Look at him go. Tyler Carmen. 42. lot from last year. You heard our conversation with Coach Mark Lutz. 13 guys that played offense and defense and really you're, you're looking at offense that has one starter back. Defense, you may have one or two starters back. So this has been kind of a growing process for them um, to, to get through this season. They stand at two and four right now. They have won games against Sims Valley and Oak Hill. Uh, they lost the start of the season to Minford 17-7. to 
and they've lost three in a three in a row to Portsmouth, Fairland, and to South Point. We've got a young quarterback and sophomore Dalen Cox. The only returner on the offensive line is Daniel Mettinger, and he played last year as a freshman. So this is again a, a team that's going to take its lumps through this season, but continued growth and continued improvement. That's what Coach Lutz wants to see. Yeah, and you know, there's the good and the bad of being young. You got your seniors that are coming back, but again, you've got nine young folks around them, sometimes eight up there, sometimes uh, freshmen starting. So again, it's just this the nature of the beast and you got to play with who you got, but again, uh, nurturing those guys and, and, and you know, getting positives out of negatives, getting positive out of losses, and that's just a tough chore that uh, Coach Lutz has had to deal with the last couple games. This is a series that has been dominated by Ironton. In fact, the Fighting Tigers have not lost to Rock Hill. The Tigers lead the overall series 11 to nothing. Last year at Rock Hill, it was 49 to seven. Two years ago here at the Tank, it was 54 to six Fighting Tigers. Here's Rick McKnight with the announcement of the homecoming queen. The queen is Miss Kate Rudman. There you go. Kate Rudman, homecoming queen 2023 at Ironton High School. They do it different this year, they, or not this year, they do it different here. They do it before the game and not at halftime. Right, and and how fitting, she's wearing orange and black. What? No. Yes. Orange <laughs> and black. Now, orange dress with a, a nice uh, coat there, a nice little pullover, so yes, dressed appropriately. <laughs> We've turned the pregame into the red carpet. No, it was... <laughs> Uh, but congratulations uh, on that and you know, the, the festivities here at Irons. We've got a great crowd already uh, here at Tanks Memorial Stadium. A beautiful evening for football. Uh, not a cloud in the sky. Tons of balloons that they just released. But we're looking for a good evening of football temperature in the low 70s, uh, upper 60s. But again, Ironton has won all 11 games in this series, and they hope to make it 12. The final game, these two teams mates, of course, Ironton leaving the OVC after this season. So this will be the final game in the foreseeable future between the Fighting Tigers and the Rock Hill Redmen. We will step aside right now, and when we come back, we will give you the lineups and the kickoff. Rock Hill won the toss, deferred to the second half, so the Fighting Tigers offense will be on the field first here tonight. So this has been the Spare Time Recreation Countdown to Kickoff, the place you should be after the game. Sponsoring before the game, spare time recreation on South 3rd Street in Ironton. Back after this timeout, we'll kick it off from Tanks Memorial Stadium, Ironton and Rock Hill on Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and MyTown TV. It's tailgate time in the bluegrass. Uncle, Uncle Rick, Rick, what, what are, are you doing? doing? I'm getting ready to make my announcing debut. And I believe that's football time in the bluegrass. But you can believe this, Clark's has everything you need for a winning tailgate. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Safe, Kentucky. Buckle up and put the phone down. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings.
OVC matchup. The Fighting Tigers going for their 30th straight OVC win. Rock Hill looking for its first win in league play here in 2023. Head coach Mark Lutz of the Rock Hill Redmen in his sixth season, 23 wins and 40 losses. He is on the field right now. The same arena or stadium, if you will, where he had plenty of success as a player. And now he stands on the field named after his uncle, Bob Lutz Field. And uh, we're looking forward to tonight's game with the Fighting Tigers and the Redmen. Ironton coached by Trevin Pendleton, his sixth season, 60 wins and 11 losses. And the Fighting Tigers ranked number one in the region. Still aiming for the postseason and uh, getting locked in for that, which is still a month away. You still have four games to go. Homecoming tonight, you've got senior night in week 10 against Portsmouth, sandwiched in between those two games. Two road games at Colgrove next week and at Gallia Academy the following week. Tigers still waiting to run onto the field. Rock Hill on the sidelines here. And there are white uniforms, white jerseys, red numerals and letters, trimmed in black, red pants with a black and white stripe down the side, red helmet with the spear on each side. The Fighting Tigers run out of the locker room across the way. And we are just about set to kick it off. Ben Sloan carrying the American flag, Noah Patterson with the big I flag as the team makes its circle and heads across the way. Tigers in their black jerseys, white numerals, orange helmet, black and white stripe across the top, white pants with the orange and black trim. Again, the Fighting Tigers will get the ball first to start tonight's game. Bailey Thacker, senior quarterback, will lead the team onto the field. He's completed 60% of his passes this year, 36 for 60, 706 yards and 10 touchdowns with no interceptions. Zane Williams, your featured back, 5'9", 200, and a sophomore. He averages 8.5 yards per touch, five touchdowns, 417 yards. Jesse Copas has had a couple of good weeks back-to-back -back running the ball for the Tigers. He's a 5'9", 185-pound junior, averaging 5.7 yards per carry, 113 yards and a couple of touchdowns for him. Uh, we'll see the wideouts, of course, Sean Terry, who got another big offer this week to Wisconsin. So you add that up, uh, Wisconsin and yeah, yeah, West I'll Virginia, the, the sixth of Eastern many. Michigan. And <laughs> yes. Yeah, just continuing. Um, but just a dynamic athlete and, and superstar football player. All right, waiting for the clock to wind down. I think everybody's ready. We're just waiting for the last 90 seconds to uh, tick off of the clock. I know Jim Tracy of WSAZ News Channel 3 is ready. He is uh, – Sent me a text already and said, "Let's go. <laughs> Let's I've got go. I've got two other games to get to." So, the customary uh, rose petals yeah. at the 50-yard line. Yep. Yeah. Going from sideline to sideline. Tigers and the Redmen here. What are you looking for tonight? Well, again, uh, you know, obviously number one, you got to stay healthy. Yeah. You know, your number one's got to go out there and just play at 100% like they're used to. As soon as you take something away, you know, bad things happen. But bad things can happen at any point in time. But, again, uh, get a good half of football from the first teamers. And then also the young guys, when they come in, you know, play solid, you know, on, on both sides of the football, special teams. And I, I'm just looking forward to just seeing a lot of faces. But, again, those young faces do well. All right, Eris Pittman and Sean Terry will drop back to receive the kick here tonight. Your kickoff man for Rock Hill is Trevor Lawless. He's a 6'1", 175-pound junior. They've got a different player for kickoffs and for the PATs. Uh, Connor Blagg is your place kicker, and the kickoff guy, again, is Trevor Lawless. He'll be kicking from right to left as we get things started. Deep to receive. Terry and Pittman back at the 15-yard line. The official near the goal line blows the whistle, and we are ready for action. Finally, homecoming 2023 at the tank. The kick is to the near side, and it will go out of bounds. Headed Sean Terry's way, but it went out of bounds at around the 25, so the flag will be dropped, and Ironton will set up first and 10 at the 35 with exactly 12 minutes showing on the clock. 
No matter who you play, execution is the name of the game, and that's what the coaching staff is looking for tonight. Limited penalties, but again, uh, those execution plays. Uh, no jumping off signs, no false starts, no things like that. Just execute the way you're supposed to be. Let's, uh, let me backpedal on okay. that. Ironton's the taking the penalty, <laughs> and they want Rock Hill to kick it again. They'll just kick it out of bounds again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You keep doing that, you'll be kicking off from the five. Um, I, I, look, I know they don't want to give Sean Terry a chance, right? He is, if we quote The Rock, the most electrifying man in high school football in Southeast Ohio. Um, you know, maybe a squid kick or something. So they'll back it up to the 35-yard line instead of the 40. And, again, uh, Lawless will kick it away. Lawless will kick a squib kick. Bounces around, picked up by Connor Lowe, and he just falls on the ball at the 44-yard line. So that's where the Tigers will set up first down and 10, not the 35. They actually gain nine yards out of that. And the Tiger offense will come out onto the field for the first time. Ball spotted just inside the left hash mark as the Tiger offense heads out onto the field. Caleb Jacobs will be your center. Bowen Gossett, Noah Patterson on the right side of the line as they line up with Sean Terry in the backfield. Wing back to the right side. Bailey Thacker in the shotgun takes the snap. Swing pass out to Terry who makes the catch at the 40. Cuts up field. He's to midfield. Flag on the play. He reverses the field. We'll get a block in the back as Terry takes it down the sideline on the left side to the 10, to the 5, and into the end zone. But it is coming back. It's a block in the back. Thrown at midfield. That was... Uh, that was a relatively easy call to make. And the ball will be backed up 10 yards. So he touched the ball one time last week and got a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, touchdown. And the first touch this week goes for a touchdown. Well, remember he had the uh, scoop and score on the fumble return that was also called, called back, back yes. because of a penalty. So they'll back it up 10 yards from the spot of the foul, which is the 49. And it'll be first down. On the right, on the, uh, I'm sorry, left side of the offensive line, you have Austin Bump and Aiden Lane. Tight end or H-back is Tanner Moore. Defensively, Rock Hill will line up with a four-man front. Drew Shug, Daniel Mettinger, Gage Clutters, and Zach O'Brien. Same personnel and formation. Terry behind Thacker and now goes in motion. Fake pass to Terry. Here comes the pressure as Thacker looks to run. He'll take it across the 40, 45 and brought down at about the 48 yard line by Levi Giles, the linebacker for Rock Hill. Second down. Zane Williams is now in replacing Sean Terry. Your linebackers are Carson Doolin, a freshman, and Levi Giles. And in the secondary, Chase Sizemore, Brady Stamper, the corners, Connor Black, Anthony Stamper, Preston Malone will be back there as defensive backs as well. Nine-yard pickup. Uh, Tatum Moore was open down the middle, but not, uh, not time to throw. And off to Zane Williams, running left. Spins off a tackler, diving ahead to the 46 of Rock Hill. And let's see, the spot that's close to a first down, they mark him just shy. So it's third down and about a foot for the Fighting Tigers. You also have Braden Shrek in as a wide out. Tyler Roach in as well. They'll be wide to the left side on third down and less than a yard. Thacker again from the shotgun. Tied in more to the right side. Copas will line up as an H back to the right with Zane Williams on the left side now, Bailey Thacker. Here's the snap, the handoff to Zane, little stutter step in the backfield. We had a uh, whistle before the play star, uh, stopped and a flag on the play. We get procedure called against the Fighting Tigers. Yeah, we had some movement there on the line before the ball was snapped. So the second penalty of the night for the Fighting Tigers will back it up into their own territory. And instead of third and a foot, you're looking at third down and about six yards to go. And then, again, those are the little things that the, the coaches upstairs and down there on the field. That's, that's what they're looking at. It's like, you know, we, we know the opponent, yes, and we know we should win. But, again, we want to take care of the little things, and that's, of course, what he'll talk about during the postgame show, the little things and how well they did. Harris Pittman into the lineup. He'll be a, an H-back to the right side. Two receivers right, Sean Terry and Braden Shrek. Terry goes in motion now to the left side. Thacker from the shotgun takes the snap, looks right. He's going to lob one, a wheel route for Pittman. He makes the catch at the 25, and he's going to take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Fighting Tigers. 
52-yard pass play from Bailey Thacker to Ares Pittman. It's 6-0 Ironton. Set up beautifully, the play action. Also in motion with Sean Terry. All eyes looking into the backfield, and he was wide open. The only thing the quarterback had to do was get it there in stride, and that's what he did. 52-yard strike. Thacker to Pittman. David Fields on to attempt the extra point for the Fighting Tigers. And we get whistles again. Okay. All sides against Rock Hill. All sides against Rock Hill. Tigers decline the penalty. They'll just try the extra point here. Braden Shrek is the holder. Or are they going to mark it forward? They did, then they moved it back. All right. Point after try here for David Fields. Snap comes back, offsides again. Rock Hill jumped there on the right side. Ironton saying decline it. Let's go. Third time's a charm, right? Let's do it. Okay. Low snap. Shrek just does get it on the tee, and Fields puts it up and through. 10.04 to play in the first. Ironton 7, Rock Hill 0. Back after this timeout. Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and My Town TV. We're not changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. Every growth number that we have is another person that we helped. People out in the world today need help, and that's what we're there for. Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free boneless Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Seven nothing. Fighting Tigers lead the Rock Hill Redmond. 10:04 to play in the first quarter. David Fields will kick it away for the Tigers. What's happening? <laughs> Early lead for the Fighting Tigers. Stamper is deep to receive for Rock Hill. Anthony Stamper. He's standing back there along with Levi Giles and Connor Blagg and Fields with the kickoff. It is a high short kick, and this one is going to bounce at the 16. Kicks back, it rolls around. Stamper picks Ooh. it up and then is drilled. Popped right there at the 19-yard line. Tackled forward to the 20 by Tyler Carmen. Yeah, he and Josh Johnson right there as soon as Stamper picked up that ball. First offensive series for the Rock Hill Redmond. Dalen Cox will be the quarterback. 5'10, 140 pound sophomore. Young quarterback. And in the backfield, Levi Giles, Gage Clutters, and Anthony Stamper. Giles, 5'11, 190 and a senior. Clutters, 6'2, 220 and a junior. And Stamper, 5'10, 165 and a junior. They'll open up in the T formation. Cox has movement in the background, in the backfield, I should say. As Stamper jumped out of his stance. And that'll be a five-yard mark off against Rock Hill. On the offensive line, Nathan Stone will start at center. Gabe Clutters and Chase Blevins are the guards. Daniel Mettinger and Ryan Clement are the tackles. Drew Shug and Cameron Stevens are the tight ends. And speaking of the little things, that's conversely what Coach Leach was saying. We got to stay ahead of the chains. We're so young, we can't put ourselves in second and yep. 10, second and 15, and here we go, first and 15. Dalen Cox under center with a tee set. He'll take and he'll hand off to Stamper running right side, and he gets out to about the 17-yard line. 
before he's brought down by looks like Ben Sloan and Somebody Harris Pittman. Up. Yeah, it's a lineman, and they've they've already had uh, some issues with the offensive line. Uh, Wyatt Jenkins, a usual starter at center, not starting tonight, and uh, Nathan Stone in his spot. And the training staff is out to check on. Again, can't really see who the player is. I don't know if that's, that might be Mettinger. I'm looking for 74. I don't want to speculate, but I did see a number four. Coach Mark Lutz is out checking on his player as well. Ironton on the board, leading seven to nothing after a three play 56 yard drive that took a minute 56 off the clock. Bailey Thacker with a 52 yard touchdown pass to Aris Pittman, the extra point kick by David Fields puts the Tigers up seven to nothing. And this is um, not, uh, not good, it looked like um, training staff went down to the end zone where the EMS is located and they're not taking any chances. Here on this one. So we'll have a, a bit of a delay here with 9.46 to play in the first quarter. And uh, definitely hope and pray that uh, he's okay. Looks like uh, maybe his parents are out there. Uh, Rock Hill coaches. Training staff. That's, it's always tough with something like this. Um, now they're, they're kind of clearing the path and bringing the, uh, the ambulance out. And I guess they're going to bring that onto the field with the stretcher, the gurney. Seven nothing iron to nine forty six to play in the first quarter. We're going to step aside for a moment. We'll be back after this timeout. Fox Sports fourteen twenty and iHeartRadio and My Town TV. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, or a late night snack on the way home, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return free bread. Refuel. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock Jewelers, and this uh, school season we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you and any of your gift giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. <music> new to report. 
the ambulances back out on the field. And they're being extra cautious. You, you want to take that extra precaution whenever the chance of a serious injury. Um, teams both on their, their uh, sidelines uh, all taking a knee. And now the gurney the stretcher is out. I did not see specifically what happened. Um, Now it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, with Rock Hill, I mean, it's your teammate, your brother, who you go to battle with every week and every day in practice, and now you've got to try to refocus and and play football. That that can be a difficult task sometimes. And now all the Rock Hill players are coming out to show support for their teammate. difficult um, anytime and especially you know this early in the game and trying to refocus and now some of the Ironton players are heading out as well and it is Daniel Mettinger And of course, these two schools close. Right. So everybody knows everybody. Yeah. So. You go to um, you go to battle with each other against one another on the field, but you know in situations like this. <coughs> There, there are no enemies. You know, everybody's teammates here. Um, Only single seats left except for VIP and Platinum. And Mettinger is being placed in the emergency services vehicle, ambulance, and had um, he took his face mask off of his helmet. And they had him strapped into the gurney. Again, taking every precaution necessary. And you just you know, hope and pray for the best. And it's not you know, a head or neck injury. But they will take him uh, to have him examined. And I just uh, just wonder if they'll have them, you know, stretch, warm up, or you know, take some sprints or jogs or something. And that's what Rock Hill's doing here on the sideline, trying to stay loose here. And Ironton doing the same thing. So it's um, Daniel Mettinger, sophomore, who. Um, is being taken to a healthcare facility. And obviously we 
hope and pray for the best for him, that, uh, that he's okay. Now after just a, a little bit of a delay, they'll let the players get loose and Rock Hill will have the football second down and 12 from the 18 yard line. Here comes another ambulance. Now, uh, going to create a little jam out there. Hey, will you draw out one of these numbers, please? Just go dig through it, find the right one. <laughs> All right, so again, after the players stretch and get a little bit loose. We'll get back to action. 7-0, Ironton on top. Scoring on the first drive of the ball game. 52-yard touchdown pass from Bailey Thacker to Aris Pittman. Rock Hill will have second down and 12 yards to go from the 18-yard line with 9.46 to play in the first quarter. So we'll see who goes in for uh, Mettinger on the offensive line. So again, now the Rock Hill team has to refocus and uh, finish the remainder of this game. Okay, it looks like it is going to be uh, Levi Ross. A sophomore. Who is going to be in on the offensive line for Rock Hill. Defensively for the Tigers. On the line. Aiden Lane. Tanner Moore. Noah Patterson. For the three-man front. Linebackers in the middle. Ben Sloan and Austin Bump. Second down as we get back to action. Here's a handoff to the right halfback, Levi Giles. And Levi Giles is brought down at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Third down. Hey, I can't. Turn I can't see. On. I can't see. Give me a lamp. Give me a lamp. <laughs> when you get when you get in your fifties and you can't see things, you got to have lights. Third down and twelve for Rock Hill. Ironton showing blitz, and here they come with it. It is a handoff on the right side and nowhere to run. A loss back to the fourteen yard line. And I think that was Gage Clutters on the carry, the fullback. So each running back touched the ball one time in that series, and Rock Hill loses yardage back to the 14. It is fourth down and 16 now for the Redmen. Yeah, Josh, coming, Josh Johnson coming out from his cornerback spot. Punting unit comes on for Rock Hill. Landon Rose is the punter. He's 5'7", 150, and a senior. Sean Terry back at midfield for the Tigers. Rose right around the two-yard line when he will get the snap. Play clock expired. They, you know, they did take a while, so another penalty against Rock Hill. They'll back it up. Five-yard penalty. Fourth and 21, 8.06 to play. First quarter, 7-0, Ironton with the lead. And now Rose is a couple yards deep in the end zone. Sean Terry at around the 47 for Ironton. Good snap back to Rose. The kick is away short. End over end kick. It hits at the 30, takes a Rock Hill roll toward the sideline. It will be down at the 36-yard line by Cameron Stevens. Great field position for the Fighting Tigers to start their second drive of the night, already leading 7 to nothing. 7.50 to play in the first quarter. 
Ironton has the ball officially at the 36. All right, Braden Schreck will be a wide receiver to the right side. Sean Terry, slot receiver left. Tyler Roach wide to the left. Zane Williams on the left side of Bailey Thacker. High snap, it's over his head. Thacker goes back and picks it up near midfield. Now has to run, hits the sideline and runs out of bounds at around the 40 yard line. So it will be second down and where are they gonna spot it? 40, all right, second and 14. Had some issues with a high snap this year. Two receivers left, one right. Thacker in the shotgun. Williams behind him. Thacker takes and rolls left side. Throws to the sideline. The pass is caught by Moore, and immediately he's tackled at the Rock Hill 38-yard line. Tatum Moore on the reception. He's brought down by Chase Sizemore. And the Tigers will have it third down and long, third and 13. Yeah, only a two-yard pickup. Again, nice pursuit by the Red Men. Braden Shrek wide right. Two receivers bunched up just off the line on the left side. Terry comes in motion. They hand off to him on the sweep. Terry slams on the brakes, makes a cut, makes a man miss. Goes to the 35, is hit by three Rock Hill defenders and tackled shy of the 30-yard line. That's about how many it takes to tackle him. Chase Sizemore, Anthony Stamper leading the charge for Rock Hill. Still well shy of the first down. Fourth down for the Tigers, but they'll keep the offense on the field. Copas comes out to replace Zane Williams. He'll be in the backfield with Thacker on fourth down and seven. Two receivers left, one right. Thacker takes the snap, rolls the pocket to the left side, fires to the sideline. The catch is going to be made sliding down at the 35-yard line. I'm sorry, 25-yard line. Tyler Roach makes the catch, and that is good for a first down. Eight yard out, if we can say. And sliding with the catch on the first down. Change move, Tigers first down. Tyler's eighth catch of the season. Didn't play last week. Single wide receiver to each side of the field. Thacker from the shotgun takes the snap, hands off to Copas up the middle. Copas tries to stiff arm a defender, takes it across the 20 and gets down to the 18 yard line. Drew Shug in on the stop for Rock Hill. Seven-yard pickup for Copas on his first carry of the night. Second and three. Five forty-five and counting here in the first quarter. Tigers by seven. Braden Shrek wide right. Sean Terry in a slot that way. Single wide receiver to the left. Thacker takes the snap. Hands off again to Copas up the middle. Big hole. He dashes to the right side. Takes it across the 15 and down near the 10-yard line. Another good hard run by Jesse Copas. Spot him just at the 11th, seven yard pickup. Right to the line of scrimmage for the Tigers. Two receivers right, one left. It's Copas again. This time he got popped in the backfield and dropped for a loss. And they read that one perfectly and that was Shug on the stop for Rock Hill. Yeah, that's a loss of two. Yeah, 44 right there. Met him square and did not let Copas go anywhere. Timeout fighting Tigers. Yeah. Take a timeout with 5.09 to play in the first quarter. 7-0 Ironton. We will keep it right here and let you know that coming up at halftime, we'll have our City National Bank halftime report, and we will introduce to you our Screen Doctors Student Athlete of the Week. Brought to you by Screen Doctors in South Point. These are athletes and students, student first, athlete second, excelling in the classroom and on the field. And we'll spotlight one each week. That is coming up at the half. Still a quarter and a half away. And if you're Rock Hill and Coach Mark Lutz, you got to like the defense. you got to like what they're doing. They're hitting and they're tackling. They're making good plays and not letting Ironton after contact, you know, make big chunks of yards. And we've seen that the last couple of contacts there. Ironton first down on the previous, but right there, nice stick by Shug. And Ironton calls timeout. It'll be second down and 12. Some other big games in the area tonight. 
course, the Wheelersburg Oak Hill game was canceled. Oak Hill with injuries canceled the game with Wheelersburg, so they have no one to play. Jackson is at Miami Trace. Big one in the OVC tonight, 5-1 and one Fairland is at 4-2 and two South Point. Fairland ranked second in the region. South Point ranked ninth. All right, here we go. Back to action on second down and 12. Thacker from the shotgun. Zane behind him. It is going to be a handoff to Williams up the middle. Little stutter step there at the line. Takes it inside the 10 and gets down to about the 8-yard line. And he's brought down by Zach O'Brien. Still third down for the Tigers. We'll call it seven. Five-yard pickup. You know, Zane eluding contact at the line of scrimmage, but again, once he got to those linebackers, again, they did not let him get any extra yards, so Tigers third and seven. High snap again. Thacker takes, gives to Zane, hit at the line, bounces left. He heads to the five and into the end zone. Touchdown, Fighting Tigers. Zane with his sixth rushing touchdown of the season. Ironton goes up 13 to nothing, 432 to play in the quarter. Met with contact in the end zone. I believe that was number 14, Stamper. He put a good lick on him, but uh, not before he was two yards deep in the end zone. Zane Williams with the touchdown. David Fields on to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good spot, good kick. 14-0, 432 to play in the first quarter. Ironton with the lead over Rock Hill. Back after this timeout, Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and My Town TV. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. For over 60 years, Ashland Office Supply has been your locally owned office supply shop. From office supplies to furniture, they have everything you need to keep your business running smoothly. Shop online at ashlandoffice.com. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Fighting Tigers with the lead over Rock Hill. David Fields kicking it away again for the Tigers. This is a short kick to the near side. It will be fielded at the 19-yard line by Blagg. Blagg takes it up across the 25 and gets out to the 27-yard line. uh, Moore is in on the stop. Copas was in there as well. Second possession for Rock Hill. 4.26 to play in the first quarter. They trail at 14 to nothing. Line of scrimmage will be the 28-yard line. Ironton on the board after a nine-play 36-yard drive that took 3.18 off the clock. Zane Williams, nine-yard touchdown run, an extra point by David Fields. Makes it a two-score Ironton lead. Dalen Cox. In the T formation behind him, he will take and hand off to Giles, who runs left, breaks a tackle there at the line, across the 35-40, spinning, and finally brought down by Caden Edwards at the 43-yard line. Nice run by Levi Giles. And again, the T formation misdirection play. Fighting Tigers thought it was going to the right. As soon as Giles got that football, there was nobody near him, and eyes got big, and he started trekking down the football field all the way to the 43, so... 16-yard pickup by Giles. Outside linebackers for the Tigers, Eris Pittman and Braylon Sturgill. Cornerbacks are Sean Terry and Josh Johnson. Your safeties are Braden Shrek and Caden Edwards. T formation again for Rock Hill as they line up on first down and 10. Cox will hand off to Stamper. Kind of bumped into him in the backfield and not much room there. He was hit behind the line by Patterson, tried to spin to his left, and was finished off by Austin Bump. Bump. 
Second down and 10 for Rock Hill. That time, Ironton with the penetration, and as soon as Stamper got the football, there was Patterson right there to disrupt that play from going anywhere. Gain of about a half a yard. We'll call it second and nine. 14 nothing. Ironton on top here, first quarter. Cox back to the line of scrimmage under center. Hands off again to Giles left side. Trying to weave his way through the line. He'll take it across the 45 and be brought down. Ben Sloan comes out with a football, but this was after the tackle had already been made. Looks like Josh Johnson will get up from the bottom of the pile there on that run by Levi Giles, which is good for about five yards, third and five. Yeah, that was the previous play that got him 16. And uh, again, nice job by Giles to, as you said, weave his way for about four or five yards. So we got a third and we'll call it five for Rock Hill. Zane Williams now in as a middle linebacker. Run the same play. Let's do it again. Yeah. At 16 and then four. Let's see. T formation, and they do. Yep. They give it to Giles, <laughs> and he is hit in the backfield by Sturgill, then grabbed by Johnson. Uh, slowed down a little bit more. Ben Sloan comes in. Austin bump, and they swarm him back at the 45-yard line. That's a loss of a couple, and fourth down is forthcoming for Rock Hill with under two minutes to go. That time with the defensive penetration getting there, Giles was almost able to slip that first tackle to try to create something, but uh, once that happened, about three or four black jerseys showed up. Loss on the play of three yards, so fourth, and we'll call it eight. Punting unit comes on for Rock Hill. In punt formation, Landon Rose once again. Sean Terry, back at the 22 for Ironton. Rose will kick this one away from about the 35-yard line. Good snap back to him. He kicks it away. High, short, end-over-end end kick toward the sideline. This will hit at the 40, bounces straight up, and now hits the turf and takes a Rock Hill roll inside the 35 to the 34. Didn't, didn't look good, but it was effective, I guess. Stayed away from Sean Terry and got a nice roll in the end. First and 10 Tigers from the 34 with a minute 16 to play in the first quarter, leading 14 to nothing. Some scores for you. Fairland leads South Point 7-6 in the second quarter. Colgrove leading Gallia 12-7. Portsmouth leading Chesapeake 14 to nothing. Fairland now up 14-6 on South Point. First and 10 for the Fighting Tigers. Bailey Thacker in the shotgun. Two receivers to each side of the field. Sean Terry goes in motion right to left. The handoff goes to Zane Williams, who slips a tackle at the line but cannot get away from Zach O'Brien, who brings him down right there at the line of scrimmage. No gain, second down and 10. Well, that play read beautifully by the Rock Hill Redman. In fact, Zane did all he could to get out of the backfield back to the original line of scrimmage. They're going to mark him forward to the 35, so technically one officially yard. one yard gain. Tyler Roach will be wide to the right side. That's the short side of the field. Sean Terry and Braden Shrek to the left, and now Terry will come to the short side of the field, the right side, and we get another timeout taken by Ironton. They didn't have the right setup, and Trevin Pendleton says, give me a timeout here with 36.4 seconds to play in the quarter. 14-0, Ironton with the lead over Rock Hill here in the first quarter. And again, just doing enough just to keep the Fighting Tigers you know, at bay, Ironton, of course, had that 52-yard uh, touchdown strike. Thacker to Pittman to open up the scoring for the Fighting Tigers. And, you know, since then, we've seen a, a little bit of good defense here by Rock Hill just to kind of make the Fighting Tigers work here on offense, if you will. Welcome, everybody, back watching on My Town TV tonight. Been away for a couple of weeks with Ironton being on the road, but we appreciate everybody watching on MyTown TV. Make sure you download the MyTown TV app to your smart television, your, your phone, your iPhone or Android, and you can watch the Tigers on MyTown TV live and, and archive. And make sure you follow them on Instagram for the Monday Moves. See if the Tigers have anybody in Monday Moves here in a couple of days. 
Two receivers left as Thacker takes the shotgun snap, tosses to Zane Williams, and he is upended in the backfield. Good tackle uh, in there by Chase Sizemore, who slipped the blocker and made the stop on Zane. So that's a loss of a couple, and Ironton looks at third down and long. Yeah, just 33, so a two-yard loss. But again, Coach Luch is always sending somebody, sending somebody into that backfield just to create a little bit of disruption, and that time went for a two-yard loss. Ironton with a third and 11. Thacker takes the shotgun snap, looks to throw, fires to the near side. Roach makes the catch, gets a good block, hits the 50, and is brought down in Rock Hill territory at the 46-yard line. Brought down by Brady Stamper, the freshman, but you have a third down situation. You find your go-to guy, that's Tyler Roach. He makes the catch, moves the sticks again as the first period clock hits zero. 14-0 after one, Ironton with the lead over Rock Hill. We'll be back after this timeout on Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and My Town TV. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm dreaming. Of what? Fall on the bluegrass, days at the track, Nats on the 50-yard line. Well, you want to be at the 50 instead of on the 50. That could be dangerous. But to complete your day, you can count on Clark's Pump and Shop. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Fighting Tigers in Rock Hill territory at the 46. Jason Filia, Kevin Anthony along with you from Tanks Memorial Stadium. Homecoming, Ironton 14, Rock Hill 0. Braden Baker in the lineup for the Tigers as a wide receiver. He will be on the – nope, now he's going to leave the field. Sean Terry is the slot receiver left. Thacker from the shotgun. Zane Williams behind him. Moore goes in motion to the right side, and the fake, nope, the handoff to Zane up the middle. Zane across the 40, 35, dropped the ball, and Rock Hill jumped on it. Gabe Clutters recovers the fumble. Zane was just trying to keep his balance and lost the football as he put his hand down on the ground. So Gabe Clutters recovers, and Rock Hill will have the ball. Yep. Yep, Zane got to the secondary and, and got hit, put his left hand down, if you will, to kind of hold himself up, and that ball just kind of came right out. And Rock Hill on it to cover it and fumble. Turnover, Fighting Tigers into the hands of Rock Hill. Spot at the 32, 32 of iron. Or oh, the Rock Hill 32. Rock Hill. 11.52 to go, 14-0 Ironton. Here's a, a big hit at the 30-yard line. Is that Stamper? Stamper was on the run for Rock Hill and was brought down at the 30, so that's a two-yard loss. I'm just finding yards hard to come by by the Redmen here early on. Second down as Dalen Cox gets the play call from Mark Lutz and will head back into the huddle. Play clock at 13 seconds as the Redmen get to the line again from the T formation. Cox will take and he will hand off to Giles running left side, has a hole, squirts through it, runs into Austin Bump, is brought down at around the 32, 33 yard line. He had a hole momentarily, but it closed real quick. Giles moving from right half to the left side to look for that room, actually giving his blockers a chance to create some running room, running space. Got a little bit, but it closed quickly. Third down and eight for Rock Hill. Logan Stewart, a 6'1", 195-pound freshman, checks in for Gabe Clutters on the offensive line. Clutters recovered that fumble and uh, 
He had his helmet off, so he comes to the sideline. Now Rock Hill will send a single wide receiver to the right side, kind of a wing T set. Here's the handoff on the sweep to Stamper and a nice tackle by Braden Shrek just across the 35-yard line, and Stamper is brought down at the 36. Still shy of the first down by about five yards, so the Redmen will be faced with fourth down once again. Of course, you have a lot of Ironton connections on that Rock Hill sideline. Mark Lutz played at Ironton, of course. Um, Red Burcham, one of his assistants. Nick Culbertson, Jesse Carmen. Fourth down and five. And Landon Rose will kick it away. Takes the snap, almost blocked. A high short kick heading to the sideline. This will go out of bounds. Oh, boy, let's see where they mark this one. It is going to be at the 44 of Rock Hill. So that's a seven-yard punt. Ooh. Ireton gets the ball back with 9.28 to play in the first half, leading 14 to nothing. And the Rock Hill guilty of making Ireton play a little bit of, of I would call it sloppy football again, but again putting hits on the Fighting Tigers, making the, some of the yards tough, but previous play offensively for the Fighting Tigers resulted in a fumble. No points for Rock Hill after that turnover, and Ireton has the football in good field position at the 44 of Rock Hill. Two receivers left, one right. Thacker from the shotgun. Caden Edwards goes in motion. They hand off to him on the jet sweep. He cuts up field across the 40, 35, angles to the left, spins down at the 30-yard line as he was brought down by Chase Sizemore. First carry for Caden Edwards. That'll move the sticks for the Tigers. Sixth carry of the season. First and 10 from the Rock Hill 30. 26 yards on the carry. How many? From the 44 to the 30. 14, right? 14, yes. Okay. I'm on the wrong side of the 50-yard <laughs> line. Connor Lowe is in as a wide receiver to the right. Edwards goes in motion again. And the handoff goes to Zane Williams up the middle. Zane breaks a tackle there at the line. He's to the 20, down to the 15, and spun down inside the 15-yard line. Again, Sizemore on the stop. But Zane with another big carry and a first down for the Fighting Tigers. Think that spot's going to be just inside the 15, so we'll go ahead and give him the 14, 16-yard pickup by Zane Williams. 8.44 left. Sean Terry wide left. Caden Edwards in a slot that way. Thacker in the shotgun will bring Connor Lowe in motion. Hand off to him on the jet sweep. Connor Lowe gets a block, cuts up field. He's to the 10, to the 5, and to the house. Connor Lowe, 14-yard touchdown run on the jet sweep. His first score of the season, and the Fighting Tigers go up 20 to nothing. Moving right to left. Got a good block on the left end, and into the end zone untouched. Connor Lowe for the score. I said last week he was going to have a touchdown. Yes, right? you did. Yes, you did. He had the interception return. Fields with the extra points, and he just sneaks that one in in the right upright. 8.26 left in the first half. Ironton, 21, Rock Hill, 0. Back after this timeout. Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and MyTown TV. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, or a late night snack on the way home, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Free bread. Refuel. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock's Jewelers, and this uh, school season we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift-giving needs, and uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring.
21-0 Fighting Tigers lead Rock Hill. 8.26 to play in the first half. David Fields ready to kick away again for the Fighting Tigers. Stamper deep to receive. Giles is back there as well, as is Preston Malone. Fields with a line drive kick that will drive uh, – Oh, that's Black. I'm sorry. Back to the 12. He'll run up the middle across the 20. He'll get out to the 25-yard line and be stopped right there. So Black with a nice little return. Rock Hill with 8:19 to play in the first half. We'll get the football once again. Still looking for a sustained drive here in this ball game. The class of 1993 celebrating their. 30th reunion here tonight. Yeah, Rick gave a shout out to, to 83, but I believe that's, oh. that's next month. But 93 is 93 here. 93 is here tonight. 93 is here, yes. And 88, 1988 is here too. 88 is here, okay. Dalen Cox under center will hand off to Stamper, who runs right side. He's grabbed by Josh Johnson and tackled down uh, just across the 30, maybe the 33, 34 yard line. Shy of the first down. It'll be second and short for Rock Hill. And for so many years, Kevin, we saw that T formation that Coach Bob Lutz ran here and super successful. And it's just one of those, uh, you've got to be very disciplined on defense with a lot of misdirection there in the backfield. Yeah, that play, of course, went for nine. They had one earlier by Giles that went for 16. And again, mm -hmm. you know, not uh, staying in your lane or playing your position, you're going to create holes for this Rock Hill and this T formation. So second and one. T formation again. Here's the handoff to Clutters. Gage Clutters, the fullback. He didn't need a whole lot for the first down. He got to the 35, which would be good for a first down. And they signal as such. The second first down of the night for the Redmen. Yeah, first first down was that 16 yard run on their second possession by Giles. And there you go, second first down of the night for the Rock Hill Redmen. They'll get to the line of scrimmage with 10 on the play clock. T formation, long count. Cox will hand off to Giles again. He tries to run left. Hirenson trying to strip that football out of there. Austin Bump was the first to hit Giles, but Giles carries the pile out to the 40-yard line for a five-yard pickup. Good hard run by Levi Giles, 190-pound senior. Yeah, Levi Giles run after contact. It got about three or four yards downfield, met by contact, and kind of felt the pressure and went to where the lesser of the pressure was, and another three yards, so second and five for Rock Hill. Chase Sizemore checks, his, checks in for the Redmen. He replaces Anthony Stamper. Play clock at eight as the Redmen get to the line of scrimmage. Again, the T formation. Cox will take, and he'll hand off to Giles left side. Giles runs into Austin Bump once again, and Bump brings him down after a very short gain of maybe a yard. Third down, and four for the Redmen. That time defensive penetration was there with the contact and the tackle. Giles unable to get any extra out of that, so third down and four. Stamper back in on third and four. Play clock at 12 as Rock Hill breaks the huddle and gets to the line. Full house T backfield once again, clutters at fullback. Cox will take and he will hand off to Stamper looking for the edge, but he runs into Josh Johnson and goes nowhere. Johnson and Aiden Lane in on the stop. Uh, that was Harris Pittman as well. Throw him in. And it's no gain on the play, fourth down. They yeah, figured that he would come left half Left half back to the right side, but that time there was no place to run. No place to run. The Tigers, three black jerseys right there. 93, that's uh, Beth Campbell's uh, graduating class, Is 1993. That right? That's correct. Well, they've got a, well, are they going to punt? Because they don't have the punter on the field right now. You've got Gage Clutters backpedaling. Looks like he's going to kick it now. Takes the low snap, kicks it away. Wobbling kick that will hit at the 38. Sean Terry comes up and fields it. 
tries to run right, spins back to the left side across the 35. He's to the 40 and lifted high into the air on the tackle by Stamper and brought down at the 43-yard line. He was way up there. But the Fighting Tigers force the punt. They get the football back once again. 4.32 to play in the first half. Ayrton with a 21 to nothing lead over Rock Hill, and they've got it first and 10 at the 43, their own 43. Fairland leads South Point 21 to six right now. Gallia Academy's taking the lead over Colgrove 14 to 12. After trailing there. All right, here come the Tigers to the line of scrimmage. Grant Day is now in on the offensive line. Bailey Thacker still at quarterback. Two receivers right, one left. Thacker wants to throw, has time. He launches one down the hash mark looking for Braden Shrek. He makes the catch at the 20, and he's going to take it to the house. 57 yards on the touchdown pass from Bailey Thacker to Braden Shrek, and it's 27 to nothing. He had a little bit of time to throw that ball. He had a lot of time. <laughs> a lot of time to throw that ball. Those One two, play in that drive. Yeah, but those two made it uh, look so easy, and the separation was already there. All you had to do was put it on the money. Fields with yet another extra point. Shrek is the holder. Good snap, good spots, and the kick is good. Ironton 28, Rock Hill 0, 422 to play. Here in the second quarter, one play, 57 yards, and 10 seconds. And that time I tried to keep my eye on the line of scrimmage because I expected someone to stunt, either a linebacker or cornerback to stunt and kind of go on a quarterback charge or some type of linebacker blitz because that's what they've been doing for the most part in this first half. But they just rushed forward. The Tigers had a hat on a hat, and, and Thacker just dropped back and waited for Braden Shrek to run his route to clear, and okay, there you are. Here you go. Catch it and go, and that's what happened. For Biggs, Braden Shrek, that is his first receiving touchdown of the season. He he is what? What is Braden Shrek? <laughs> the best the best slot receiver yeah. in Southern Ohio. <laughs> That's right. Ironton has scored on every possession with the exception of one. They turned the ball over. Even then, they were moving the ball down the field. David Fields ready to kick again. Stamper and Blag deep to receive. The kick will head down the middle of the field. Hits at the 15. Stamper fields it on the run at the 10. Runs up the middle across the 15. Good tackle. Uh, right around the 20-yard line by Barkley Litton. 21 is where they'll spot it, but a good tackle there by Litton. Twenty-one yard line is the line of scrimmage for Rock Hill. Let's see if we get uh, any changes defensively. Jesse Copas is coming out, so your defensive line will be Moore, Patterson, and Lane. T formation on first down and 10, and the handoff goes to Giles running left side. Giles fights his way out near the 25-yard line. Good hard run for Giles. You get that from this crew. These guys will run hard. Eight carries, 31 yards. 31 yards, excuse me, for Giles. Preston Malone into the lineup for Rock Hill. Dalen Cox brings the team to the line of scrimmage in the T set. 
on second down and five. Cox with a hard count. Uh, he had movement on both sides of the ball, and you will get procedure called against Rock Hill. So you go from second and five to second down and ten. And that's what, you know, Kevin, we talked about. That's what Coach Lutz talked about in pregame. You know, you get a penalty or a loss of yards, you're playing behind the chains, and with that offense, you've got to be ahead of the chains. Sitting now at second down and ten. You know, and, and, and second and five looks, you know, a lot better than second and ten, and, and right there, shoot themselves at the foot. So second and ten for Rock Hill and the T formation. Handoff goes to Stamper, and he's blown up in the backfield. That was Noah Patterson who popped him back at the 15-yard line. Ford Progress will put him at the 16. So Put that one down. Yep. All right, Ben Sloan, you're on the clock. <laughs> Or Patterson right there. Patterson and, and uh, Tyler Carmen on the, yes. the kickoff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got two nominees for our Monroe's Framing Collision, big collision of the night. Third down and 15 for Rock Hill. And they'll again line up in the tee. The play clock expires, and that'll be another five-yard penalty. Nope, Rock Hill took a timeout. 2.18 to play in the first half. 28-0. Ironton leads Rock Hill. Check some scores again. Waverly leads Minford 26 to nothing. Notre Dame over Green in the second quarter 40 to nothing. Portsmouth has a 14 nothing lead over Chesapeake at halftime. Portsmouth West 14, Valley 0. And you're still looking at uh, halftime. Gallia Academy leads Colgrove 14 to 12. South Point trailing Fairland 21 to 6. An interesting final few weeks of the season here in OVC play and, and where these teams might end up postseason wise. Fairland's number two in the region after their win over Gallia Academy last week. And South Point still in the hunt. Number nine. All right, back on the field on third down and 15 with 2.18 to go. Rock Hill gets to the huddle, and Ironton back to the line, play defense. All right. T4, mate. nope, split backs in the backfield. Stamper is a wing back to the right side. Cox will take, and he'll hand off to Clutters, the fullback. He runs into Aiden Lane and is brought down there at the line of scrimmage. Aiden Lane, and it looked like Sturgill, perhaps. It was. Sturgill went on the stop, the assist. And the punt team comes out again for Rock Hill as we wind our way under two minutes. Tigers would like to have a score here before the end of the half, give themselves a, a running clock in the second half, start the second half. Uh, Fairland at number two in the region, which, which is more of a surprise to you. South Point at nine or Portsmouth and Wheelersburg below South yeah, Point. Yeah, That's a oh, wow. Here's a punt. Good punt. Hello. Way over the head of Sean Terry. It hits the 40, takes a rock. He'll roll inside the 30. Terry will go back, and he'll pick it up at the 23-yard line. He'll run to the right. Now back to the left and to the right, weaving his way across the 35-40, hits the sidelines, and he'll be tackled with a lariat near midfield. Here comes a flag on the play. So you're going to add some yardage to that, but great punt there by Landon Rose. And a nice return by Sean Terry. And they're going to get a horse collar tackle. Personal foul. So you'll mark it 15 yards, and the Tigers will have great field position to start this drive. One fifteen left, first half. Spot should be at or near the 35-yard line. Last Ironton drive was one play. We'll see what they do here as they spot the ball for play at the 36. 36. Braden Shrek wide to the left. Nick Seitz is in as a slot receiver to the left. Sean Terry, slot receiver right. Tyler Rhodes wide right. Ball on the right hash mark. 
Copas, the tailback in the pistol formation behind Bailey Thacker. Thacker from the shotgun takes the snap, looks to throw, has plenty of time again, lobs down the middle of the field for Terry, who jumps high, and it's knocked away. Tried to come down with the ball at the five-yard line, but Stamper, Anthony Stamper, knocked it away, knocked it out of his hands. Second down and ten for the Tigers. Yeah, Stamper showing his athleticism, going up and trying to high point that ball with Sean Terry. And it almost looked like he had a better, better hands on that football. As Terry ended up playing defensive back and knocking it away. Second and ten, clock stops, 107 to play. Two receivers left and right. Shotgun for Thacker, who takes the snap, looks to throw again. Again, plenty of time. Lobs long downfield for Terry and overthrows him at the five. Terry got by his man. Uh, Preston Malone was on him, but the pass just sailed over Sean's head. It will now be third down and 10 with 101 to play. Ball at the 36-yard line. Yeah, two 40-yard sprints right there, so you expect him to go out and take a breather, and that's what he does. He's walking off the football field. Braden Baker is in for him. Baker caught his first touchdown pass of the season last week against Chesapeake. Thacker from the shotgun takes the low snap. Plenty of time again. Lobs one down the middle of the field for Baker. This one is tipped and knocked away. Double coverage there. Just going for the long pass. Three straight throws, and it is now fourth down and ten for the Tigers. Connor Lowe will check in. Aris Pittman is in. Tigers will go for it on fourth down and 10 from the Rock Hill 36 with 53.9 on the clock. Yeah, nice job by that Rock Hill secondary getting up and just knocking that football away. As Jason said, throwing into what uh, looked like triple coverage that time. And Sean Terry gets a 10 second breather right back out. And Rock Hill will take a timeout. They didn't like the defensive setup they had on that fourth down and 10. They had uh, a lot of guys back at around the 20 yard line, and the Tigers just need to get to the 20. About 26 for the first down. So, you, I mean, you want to give them a little bit of cushion, but not that much cushion, right? Right, right. And, and you know, again, 53.9, if they get the first down, it's a spike or, or whatnot, and there's still plenty of time to run at least two, three more plays. So, yeah, too much cushion, too much room. Ironton has one timeout remaining, as does Rock Hill. 28-0, Fighting Tigers on top, 53.9 to go. Coming up, we'll have our City National Bank halftime report. We'll have stats, scores, a recap of the first half, and we'll have our Screen Doctor Student Athlete of the Week. A lot of good nominations. All right, fourth down, and the Tigers come back out on the field, and they'll send three receivers to the left. Seitz, Lowe, and Terry. Aris Pittman, wide to the right side. That's the short side of the field. Bailey Thacker from the shotgun. Cope is back there with him. Thacker takes the snap. Plenty of time. Fires left. Lowe makes the catch. He's got the first down. Cuts up field at the 20 and brought down at the 15-yard line. Good route by Connor Lowe. Got the first down. Moves the stick. Stops the clock momentarily with 46.2 to play. Ironton not spiking or wasting the time out. Thacker from the shotgun with two receivers each way. Looks to throw again, fires to the right side. Pittman makes the catch. He's hit immediately and tackled inside the 10 at about the 8-yard line. And the Tigers will spend their final timeout with 32.1 seconds to play. That's about an, uh, what was that, about a 7-yard pass play? 7-yard to Aris, his second catch of the night. Tiger went from airing it out just to chop a little bit of this, a little bit of that, get a little bit closer. So now Ironton is out of timeouts. They got to, if they're tackled inbounds, they'll have to get up and spike it quickly. But again, they need seven yards to get in the end zone again. 32.1 to play in the first half. Kind of a lengthy first half. Started a little bit late tonight, just a few minutes because of homecoming and then um, the injury to Daniel Mettinger of Rock Hill uh, brought the game to a halt for a little bit. He was taken away in an ambulance, and again, uh, no report on him, but again, we just hope and pray that he's all right and can get back to action soon. All right, second down and two for the Tigers from the seven, officially. Braden Shrek wide left, two receivers right. 
Harris Pittman, wing back to the left side. Thacker from the shotgun, takes and fakes the handoff. Here comes the pressure. He is hit, and he is sacked. That's the last thing you wanted to have happen. He's, he is brought down on the blitz. Third down with 19 seconds to go, and now Thacker just has to throw the ball on the turf to spike it and stop the clock with 16.6 left. And until then, you just have seen Rock Hill rushing four, rushing four, plenty of time to pass, rushing four, bam. He sends somebody on a linebacker blitz, cornerback blitz, if you will. Thacker nowhere to go but down, but clock stops. 16.6 seconds to play. Time for two plays. Yeah. Was that or, size or one? one. Yeah, yeah, size one. Size more on the side. All right, here you go. Fourth down and 10 from the 15. 16.6 to go. Pittman, Zane Williams, and Braden Shrek, the receivers to the left, and Rock Hill signals for its final timeout of the half. He had six down linemen. When you put six down linemen, you got two or three Ironton receivers, one on one. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so, uh, Coach Lutz, Mark Lutz, with a uh, little added responsibilities this year. He's also acting as the athletic director at Rock Hill High School. So, uh, he is a, a busy guy. I've had uh, three, I've set three Rock Hill volleyball games to referee this year. And there's three times I've been a privilege to hang out with Mark Lutz right before the game. And let's talk about the, see, I think he, 88, 89, 89, I believe he graduated. 89. Yeah. Yeah. 88, his last senior year of football. Yeah. Yeah, they had a volleyball game there last night, right? Did you officiate that one? No, I was across the river, Boyd County, Ashland, so. Yeah. Oh, a big one. Oh, yes. My Town TV was there. <laughs> That's right. You didn't have to throw anybody out, did you? Uh, no, no. I, I did listen to the game, make sure the, uh, the, the two young ladies doing play-by-play -play <laughs> didn't say anything bad about the official. They, <laughs> okay. they were very nice. Here we go. Fourth down for the Fighting Tigers. Two receivers left, one right. Thacker looks to throw. Fires across the middle. Zane Williams wide open, and he takes it into the end zone for the touchdown. 15-yard touchdown pass from Bailey Thacker to Zane Williams, and the Tigers go up 34 to nothing. Who you got? Who you got? I got him. Yeah. I got, oh, somebody forgot 24 because he was wide open. 11.9 seconds to play. The Tigers get the touchdown pass on fourth down. Here's David Fields for the PAT. Good snap, good spot, and again, right down the middle. Kick is good. It's 35-0, Fighting Tigers. They converted two fourth downs in that drive. Seven plays, 36 yards in the drive. And it took a minute four. And again, Thacker had pressure that time, so it was like one, two, three. I got to get rid of this. I hope. Yep, there he is. He's open. Zane Williams with the catch and the score. As again, Rock Hill sent... At least six, and like I said, somebody's going to be open, and it was Zane Williams. Yeah, you got Zane in uh, man coverage. You get one-on-one. -on -one. That's, uh, that's trouble. I actually looked up, and I thought I'd see Jason Filia calling volleyball for my TV last night, but it wasn't you. Not, was. not on uh, not, not Boyd County and, and Ashland. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, I figured it'd be you and what? What do I say? You and the guy across the river. You and Dickie Martin. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I was looking forward to the adjectives Dickie Martin would use to describe my volleyball officiating. <laughs> All right, David Fields, kicking again. Nice kickoff. It is to the far side, and Blag will backpedal, drops the ball at the 10, picks it up, heads to the right side, now cuts. Ooh. Oh, he was drilled at the 13-yard line. Who was that? Zane. Yeah, Zane. Zane Williams popped him right there as the clock hits 5.8 seconds left. Spotted for play at the 14. I'm going to write that one down, too. Oh, yeah.
had some good ones. I tell you, uh, I told Coach Pendleton it was. Uh, if we can get this out before uh, the snap, they're just going to take a knee. Rock Hill will and bring the first half to a close. Um, Landon Thomas got the hit last week, right? Correct. The Monroe's frame. I told Coach Pendleton, he's like, I like it. I like it. <laughs> so there you go. You got yep. kudos on that. Halftime here at the tank. Ironton all over Rock Hill, leading by a score of 35 to nothing. We'll have a running clock to start the second half. Coming up, City National Bank halftime report. Recap of the first half. We'll have stats. We'll have scores. And our screen doctor, student athlete of the week. Spotlight them. 35 0 Ironton, Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio, and My Town TV. to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. Kentucky. Buckle up and put the phone down. For over 60 years, Ashland Office Supply has been your locally owned office supply shop. From office supplies to furniture, they have everything you need to keep your business running smoothly. Shop online at ashlandoffice.com. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines, such as MMR, Tdap. HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. to start the second half of tonight's game. We'll get a peek at the Million Dollar Marching Band and alumni out on the field right now. The Eye of the Tiger. We'll give them a little listen here. That's 
my favorite song of all time. Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger from Rocky Three, which was the best of the Rocky movies, by the way. Let's recap the first half. It was all Ironton. Rock Hill won the toss, deferred to the second half. Ironton got the ball at the 44-yard line to start the drive. Three plays later, they're in the end zone. 52-yard touchdown pass from Bailey Thacker to Aris Pittman on a wheel route, capping a three-play 56-yard drive, a minute 56 off the clock. After the David Fields extra point, it was 7-0 Tigers, 10-04 to play. Rock Hill goes three and out. Uh, Short punt gave the ball to the Tigers at the Rock Hill 36. They find the end zone nine plays later, 36 yards later, and 318 later. Zane Williams with a nine-yard touchdown run. Fields extra point made it 14 to nothing at the 432 mark in the first quarter. Rock Hill picked up a first down on the next drive but could get nothing else going offensively. They had to kick it away again. Ironton takes over at the 34, had a nice drive in Rock Hill territory, but fumbled the football. It was recovered by Gabe Clutters, and Rock Hill got the ball back. However, the Redmen offense went three and out, giving, giving the ball back to Ironton at the Rock Hill 34-yard line. Three plays later, they're in the end zone. It capped a 34-yard drive on a 14-yard touchdown run on a jet sweep by Connor Lowe. His first score of the season, it took a minute two for them to find the end zone again. Extra point kick by David Fields made it 21-0, 8.26 to play in the first half. Rock Hill punted on the next possession, and Ironton took over at its own 43-yard line and they waste no time getting in the end zone. In fact, on the first play from scrimmage, Bailey Thacker found Braden Shrek down the middle of the field, 57 yards, the second touchdown pass of longer than 50 yards on the night from Bailey Thacker. Big's first touchdown reception of the season. It took all of 10 seconds, and after the extra point by David Fields, it was 28-0 Ironton. Rock Hill got the ball with 4.17 to go. They went three and out. The Tigers had 1.15 and one timeout left to try to score again. They converted two fourth downs on this drive, the second of which was a 15-yard touchdown pass from Bailey Thacker to Zane Williams. Zane's second score of the night, first through the air, and Bailey Thacker's third touchdown pass in the first half. And the extra point made it 35-0 at the 11.9 seconds mark in the second quarter. Seven plays, 36 yards, 104 off the clock on Zane's 15-yard touchdown reception. Rock Hill took a knee to bring the first half to a close and make the score 35-0. The Redmen will get the ball to start the second half. At the tank, it's homecoming. And the Million Dollar Marching Band, we'll get a little bit more from them here before we go to break. Alumni band joining them. <laughs> Million Dollar Marching Band joined by alumni at Ironton High School. 35 0 Ironton leads it at the break. We'll step aside and be back with a look at first half stats and scores, plus our Screen Doctors Student Athlete of the Week here on Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and My Town TV. We're not changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. Every growth number that we have is another person that we helped. People out in the world today need help, and that's what we're there for. The deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free boneless Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings.
It's halftime at Tanks Memorial Stadium. Ironton leading Rock Hill 35 to nothing. It was all Ironton in the first half. The stats show that. Rock Hill, Kevin, had a hard time getting anything going. Just a couple of first downs in the first half. And for Ironton, the only ones that stopped Ironton was Ironton after that fumble. Um, they scored in every possession after that, but uh, really dominant in the first half tonight. Yeah, yeah dominant, just trying to get uh, you know, the bearings down on the T formation, and, and with that comes uh, losses and stops. Rock Hill, Dalen Cox did not throw the ball and did not rush. Levi Giles, eight rushes for 31. Gage Clutters, four rushes, tattling zero. Anthony Stamper, six carries for seven. 18 carries, 38 yards, and 38 total yards in that first half for Rock Hill. That's two yards per carry. Ironton, Bailey Thacker, 8 of 11 for 164, and those three misses were the three bombs where he couldn't connect and then, of course, connected on his last three throws of that first half. 8 of 11, 164, touchdown passes of 52, 57, and 15. He also rushed the ball for a negative two, adding in that uh, sack that uh, he had two sacks on the night, totaling negative 11 and a nine-yard run. So negative two on the rushing yards for Bailey Thacker. Zane Williams... Seven carries for 54 yards, including a, a nine-yard touchdown run. He had, he had a uh, touchdown pass. We'll get to that in a moment. Copus, Jesse, that is, three carries for 12. Sean Terry's had one carry for 12. Caden Edwards had one carry for 14. And our man, Connor Lowe, one carry for 14, and that went for a touchdown. Via the air, Tyler Roach had two catches for 29 yards. Aris Pittman had two for 59, including a 52-yard touchdown catch. Braden Shrek, one catch for 57, and that was a touchdown catch. Zane Williams, one catch for 15, and that was a touchdown catch. And Connor Lowe had one catch for 21. And Tatum Moore got in the uh, catching statistics or pass catch, whatever. Uh, one catch for two yards. Again, Bailey Thacker, 8 of 11, 164, three touchdown passes of 52, 57, and 15. Tigers, uh, 107 on the ground, 164 through the air, 271, and a couple of those drives were short field. So, again, uh, Fighting Tigers, you might see the first team for the first series. You may not, but again, uh, a lot of fresh faces uh, should be getting loosened up in the locker room, ready to play here in the second half. And here's the, the I don't know, where you kind of toe the line on that. The last couple of weeks, it's been over at halftime, right? And so a lot of the guys, a lot of the starters have just played a half. You want to keep them, you know, it's a well-oiled machine as you get closer to the postseason. At the same time, you want to get them rest. So you're going to be fresh, no doubt about that. But, uh, you know, how long and where do you pull them, that's that's a tough call that Coach Trevin Pendleton will have to make. Yeah, and, again, you know, your opponents are your opponents. You know, it looked like Gallia Academy was going to be the game heading down the stretch. And Portsmouth's always Portsmouth. You never mm -hmm. know what they're going to bring. But, again, those teams as of late struggling just a little bit and Cold Grove, so, again, as a head coach, you look ahead and say, you know, we, we play our style of football. Yes, we should win. But, again, you talk about the sharpness kind of word. Yeah. You know, that would be the, the gauge of those last three or four ball games. You know, we want to be healthy and stay healthy and be at our best. But, again, if we are at our best and we're scoring 35, 42 points at half, uh, so it is what it is. It is what it is. The problem that some schools would love to have. Yeah, but, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Let's take a look at some scores from around the area right now. Eastern leads Sims Valley 42 to nothing in the third quarter. Third quarter score, Gallia Academy has uh, punched one in again. They lead Colgrove 21 to 12. Fairland still leads South Point 21 to six. That is the third quarter score. Uh, Chesapeake and Portsmouth, the Trojans have a 14 to nothing lead. That game is in the third quarter as well. Uh, let's see if there's any other scores of interest here. Portsmouth West leads Valley 27 to nothing. I'm trying to find that Jackson score. There it is. Jackson leads Miami Trace 35 to nothing. And, of course, Wheelersburg and Oak Hill canceled. Uh, Oak Hill with the injuries mounting up. Uh, didn't have enough to play. That's the second time they've done that this year. All right, so that's what we got here at the half. 35 to nothing, Fighting Tigers lead it. I'm going to jump across to uh, West Virginia and try to get a score. Cabell Midland was playing South Charleston tonight. South Charleston had been uh -oh. like, outscored like 317 to 7 this season. Um, 
And let's see the score of that one. Is that the 82 to six score that oh, I put it last week? Uh-oh, yeah. here we go. I give credit to South Charleston. They scored for the first time last week. Yes. But they got beat tonight. The game's already over. 75 to nothing. Man, that is, that's rough. I'm, I'm sure the second half was a three minute running clock. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we agree, three minute running clock. Wow. All right, halftime here, 35 nothing. Ironton with the lead. We'll be back after this timeout, and we will have our first installment of the Screen Doctor Student Athlete of the Week. We'll do that after the timeout. Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and MyTown TV. You're wondering why you struggle to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. Ashland Office Supply has been your locally owned office supply shop. From office supplies to furniture, they have everything you need to keep your business running smoothly. Shop online at ashlandoffice.com. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollux Jewelers, and this uh, school season we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm dreaming. Of what? Fall in the bluegrass, days at the track, nights on the 50 yard line. Well, you want to be at the 50 instead of on the 50. That could be dangerous. But to complete your day, you can count on Clark's Pump and Shop. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Thirty-five nothing at halftime. Talk about band on the run. <laughs> Might have to be running off the field here. Uh, Ironton back out, ready for warm-ups to start the second half. The Rock Hill Marching Band performing right now. Uh, just a couple of more scores of note. That uh, Colgrove Gallia Academy game. Gallia ran the opening kickoff of the second half back for a touchdown to go up twenty-one to twelve. Uh, Portsmouth now with a 21 to nothing lead over uh, Chesapeake. And the Reds are not out of it yet. Uh-oh. Major League Baseball, the Reds lead the Cardinals four to nothing. They're a game and a half out of the wild card. They trail the Cubs and the Marlins for that final wild card spot. And the Marlins are, are trailing the Pittsburgh Pirates right now. The Cubs and Brewers are scoreless. So we're holding out hope that the Reds can make the postseason. Go Reds. It's a long shot. Uh, it's time now for our Screen Doctors Student Athlete of the Week. Brought to you by Screen Doctors on County Road 1 in South Point. We're going to spotlight student athlete. Doesn't have to be football. It could be a different sport here at Ironton High School in the fall. And we want to spotlight those individuals who are doing it both on the field, court, et cetera, and in the classroom. And this week's Student Athlete of the Week is senior soccer player Laney Dressel. Laney's a lights-out defender on the first-year girls' soccer team at Ironton, that according to head coach Shannon Litton. She carries a 3.92 grade point average and is an honor student. Laney is a tutor at the school who plans to study health science at Marshall University next year. Congratulations to Ironton girls' soccer player Laney Dressel, this week's Screen Doctors Student Athlete of the Week, brought to you each week by Screen Doctors in South Point. If you need screens for windows, doors, or screened-in porches, call the doctor. Danny Lane, the screen doctor. The Ironton girls soccer team uh, had a, uh, a winning streak snap just the other night 
and they will play games next week at Portsmouth Monday and at Wheelersburg JV on Thursday. First year for both girls and boys soccer. Yeah, congrats to Lady Dressel, a track and field athlete also. So yeah. I get to see her during the spring. So congratulations to her. I know her and her family, and uh, we're proud of her and uh, her brothers. Proud of their sister too. So yeah, congrats to Lady Dressel. And we will do that at halftime uh, for the remainder of the season and throughout the playoffs. We'll honor a student athlete at Ironton High School. Rick. Lawrence County Veteran of the Year. The Veteran of the Year, Lawrence County. Rick. Take it, Rick. This year's deserving winner is Air Force Veteran, Mr. Aaron Collins. Please join me in a round of applause for Aaron. That's awesome. If Aaron Collins. You would like to nominate, please call Tim Carpenter at the Veterans Service Office, 532-4327. Had the, uh, or visit the privilege of uh, him helping me coach a little baseball Steelers. over the years. There you go. Coached uh, several of his kids. Thank Congratulations, you. and Appreciate thank you your for your service, for everyone who serves. Oh, yes. Veteran of the Year. Very also cool. Also a member of the uh, Ironton Fire Department, correct? Okay, yep. 35 nothing is the score here at halftime. Ironton with the lead over Rock Hill. We will take Hearts it's on fire. Rocky Four. <laughs> right. I know, man. Hearts on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Now, are you going to play more selections from this soundtrack? Are you going to play more selections from this soundtrack? As you should. That should be top of the list. <laughs> that's it. that's the, one of the best soundtracks of all. I said it's the best motion picture soundtrack of all time. Now, I know Purple Rain is up there, right? Yeah, Purple Saturday Rain. Night Fever yep. has to be up there. Yeah, Purple Rain, Saturday Night Fever. Um, I'm going to have to bring my top, my top five soundtrack. Next next week, Footloose. Footloose got to be up there too. Yeah. Uh, Dirty Dancing. I mean, yeah, you yeah. can go, man. Woo. That'll be t that'll be a tough top five though. Yeah, soundtracks of all time. Yeah, I'm gonna think about that, but yeah. I'm still going Rocky Four because okay. I, I mean well, I love I'll movie. match my top five list with your top five list next week. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down. Okay, you know? we will. We'll break it. We'll have a good time with it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rocky IV, where Rocky Balboa ends the Cold War. All right, uh, one more timeout. We'll come back and start the second half with Ironton leading 35 0 on Fox Sports 1420 and iHeart. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. For over 60 years, Ashland Office Supply has been your locally owned office supply shop. From office supplies to furniture, they have everything you need to keep your business running smoothly. Shop online at ashlandoffice.com. David Fields with a kickoff to start the second half. It is high. It is down the left hash. It is fielded by Stamper running straight ahead across the 15 out to the 20, and that is it. He is swarmed 
by black jerseys at that point. They may give him the 21 on forward progress, but the Redmen will set up first down at 10. 11.47 is when they start, and we will have a running clock here in the second half. As we start the second half, I'd like to give a shout-out to one of my favorite assistant coaches. I guess he gave the, uh, uh, the, yeah. the inspirational yep. talk to pre-game, the pre-game and speech. one of my favorite head coaches and assistant coaches of all time, he and uh, Mark Lewis are right up there, you know. Lynn Schreckel. Yep. So it was cool to see that uh, that he was able to give the you know, inspirational te- speech to the team. He was uh, one of the football coach here, assistant, and also a track coach of mine. So good to see that. Dalen Cox, the quarterback in the T formation, hands off to Giles. Giles tries to run left. He left. He runs right into Austin Bump and is brought down after a gain of two, one, one, one and a half. Second and long for Rock Hill. You've, you've called Bump's name a lot yeah. tonight. Yeah. Austin Bump, wow. All right, Cox gets back to the huddle. Redmen get to the line of scrimmage with eight on the play clock. T formation once again. Cox will take and fakes the, no, he does give, and that is Clutters, the fullback, and (laughs) guess who? Bump again on the stop, and Clutters is uh, down on the field. Yeah, he got turned in the backfield, and they started backpedaling Jason toward the defense, and that's, that's never good, and it's glad to see him getting up. On his own two feet, a little bit, little bit injured there. So he'll make it off to the sideline. So he'll be replaced by Chase Sizemore in the lineup. The line of scrimmage will be the 21 after the loss. So right back where they started, third down and 10, maybe 11. All right, back to the T formation on third down and 10. Cox will take, drops back, wants to throw, fires out in the flat, incomplete. Looking for Stamper coming out of the backfield. Sean Terry on the coverage, incomplete pass, fourth down and 10, and the punt team will come out again. Yeah, the first and only pass that time. Tigers were ready, and Sean Terry thought he was going to have him a pick six, but not able to get there in time. But again, fourth down for Rock Hill. Rock Hill trying to punt. I'm I'm mad at John (laughs) Wiley. John Wiley sold me these tickets and said they were winners. Did he leave? Did you get two numbers right? (laughs) No, I got the one six right. Hey, oh, okay, that's good. (laughs) Punt formation. The kick is away from Landon Rose. Sean Terry fields it at the 46 of Ironton. Moves right, shifts back to the left, cuts up field across midfield to the 45, 40, and tackled at the 39-yard line. I almost Giles. broke that one. Uh, is that, yeah. Yep. Giles on the stop. So the Tigers get the ball with 8.48 left in the third quarter. And it's first and 10 from the Rock Hill 39. You got it, bring it. Tiger starters back out on the field. Mostly. Uh, Braden Shrek is now the quarterback. Bailey Thacker goes to tight end. Jesse Copas is the tailback behind Shrek. Sean Terry goes in motion left to right. Shrek takes the snap. Hands off to, nope, fakes the handoff, rolls to the right side, tries to pass it to Terry, but dropped the ball. They'll call it an incomplete pass. Second down and 10. And again, with this lead, all you're looking for as a coaching staff is execution. And right there, not that, not it for the Tigers. So second and 10 now for Ironton. Do you remember uh, John McKay that used to coach the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Oh, yeah. 
story in a minute. Here's Shrek from the shotgun again, takes the snap, hands off to Copas up the middle with a big hole. Copas across the 30 down to the 25-yard line and cut down at the 24. That's good for a Fighting Tiger first down. You mentioned execution. And John McKay, Tampa Bay was terrible. Someone asked him what – again, right, Ironton right to the line of scrimmage just in all sides against Rock Hill. Someone asked him what he thought about the execution of his team, and he said, I'm all for it. <laughs> So, I remember that. <laughs> they were bad. They had those creamsicle uniforms <laughs> back then. That was, those were good. Offsides against Rock Hill. Moves the ball to the 19-yard line where the Tigers will have it first down and five. 6.52 to go. Braden Shrek in the shotgun. Copas behind him again. Shrek takes the snap. Tosses right side to Copas. Copas down the sideline to the 15, down to the 10. Breaks a tackle, dragging a defender with him inside the five and brought down at the three-yard line. He was brought down by Thomas Miller, freshman. Nice blocking on that right side by Sean Terry. First and goal from the two, 6.20 left. Third quarter, Shrek from the shotgun again. Copas right behind him. Shrek claps his hands. We get flags on the play, and we get a procedure call against the Fighting Tigers. First down and goal. Now back to the eight. All right, pistol set again. Copas behind Shrek. Snap comes back, fake handoff, swing pass out to Thacker on the right side, and he walks into the end zone for the touchdown. It's only fitting that Thacker threw a touchdown pass to Shrek that Shrek throws a touchdown pass to Thacker. 41-0. Execution again, the name of the game. They executed that play nicely for the score. 522 mark here. Obviously, we're running clock here in the third quarter. Four plays in the drive for the Fighting Tigers. Fields with the extra point attempt. Shrek is the holder. Good snap, good spots, and the kick is up and good. 42-0 Ironton. Five and a half to play. Back after this timeout, Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and My Town TV. Two nothing. Ironton leads Rock Hill. 4:59 to play in the third, and David Fields will kick it away again for the Fighting Tigers. Stamper, Blag, and Giles deep to receive for the Redmen. Fields, line drive kick. This one will be taken in by Blag at the 10-yard line. He'll run to the right side across the 15, slips as he tries to make a cut left and falls just across the 15. They may give him the 18, 17-yard line area on that. And Rock Hill will have the ball again. The clock, again, continuing to roll here on the running clock of a quick moving second half. Line of scrimmage will be the 13. Fairland leads South Point 29-14 in the fourth quarter. The Reds have a 7-0 lead. 
over the Cardinals. Play clock at 18. I think they're missing a player, and they are. They'll send Chase Sizemore out. They've got to uh, they reset the play clock now. Yes, you said 13, but it is the 18. Did I say 13? Yes, you did. I even wrote down 13. <laughs> My bad. Thank you. Here's Dalen Cox, fake handoff, quarterback keeper around the right side. He will make it to the 20 before he's hit by Bowen Gossett, Josh Johnson, Ben Sloan. Second down after the three-yard pickup and seven yards to go. His first carry of the game. Play clock down to 20 as Cox, young sophomore quarterback. Again, young football team. T formation. Cox under center, a lot of movement at the line. The handoff goes to Giles. Giles is not going to go anywhere. I guess they'll let that one go. Um, a lot of black jerseys over there. We see some new players in. Caleb Jacobs is in. Braden Baker is in. Tyson Cox. Tyler Carmen. And was that Braylon Sturgill on the stop? Nick Seitz is in there as well. Third down. And about six yards to go. Connor Lowe is in as a cornerback. T formation on third down. Here is the handoff left side to Giles. Giles tries to get away from Caleb Jacobs. He does, but he can't get away from Tyson Cox. Tyson with the tackle. At around the 24-yard line, fourth down for Rock Hill. Gallia Academy leads Colgrove 28-12, nine minutes to play in the game. One twenty-seven to go, and the punt team comes out again for Rock Hill. Landon Rose will kick it. Braden Baker will drop back to receive the kick. He is at the 40 of Ironton. Rose takes the snap. No real pressure. Gets this one away. Baker watches this hit at midfield. A high bounce, and Braden picks it up at the 45 and is swarmed immediately as he's brought down by Cameron Stevens right after making that reception on the punt return. 50 seconds to go. The clock will wind down here in third quarter with Ironton leading 42 to nothing. First and 10 Tigers from the 45 yard line. They may not run a play to start the second or the. Uh, I'm sure the refs are walking up and saying, hey, uh, there's no need to walk yeah. out here. Just stay right there. Uh, <clears throat> the clock is down to 23 seconds. Ah. They haven't put the ball down yet. Right. And he's just standing there with the football. <laughs> he's like, you're not getting it. <laughs> he's put the ball down. 12 seconds. These kids, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, you, you got to put the ball down, right? I mean, we know it's 42 to nothing. Young kids have to play. Clock's going to hit zero and bring the third quarter to a close. Back with the fourth after this, Ironton leading 42 nothing on Fox Sports 1420 on iHeartRadio and MyTown TV. Even the Rocky fans were like, um, Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm dreaming. Of what? Fall on the bluegrass, days at the track, nights on the 50 yard line. Well, you want to be at the 50 instead of on the 50. That could be dangerous. But to complete your day, you can count on Clark's Pump and Shop. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel.
for the Fighting Tigers as we move to the fourth with a six-minute running clock here in the fourth. Braden Shrek in the shotgun takes the snap, hands off to Tyler Carmen. Nice cut as he runs left. Brought down immediately by Logan Stewart. The ball came loose, and Rock Hill has recovered. Strip tackle, and that's the second turnover of the night for the Tigers. Yeah, Carmen got the ball, and immediately the defender started stripping at the football, trying to pry, pry it loose, and he did just that. So, so Rock Hill will have it with 5.21 to play. Again, they in between the third and fourth quarter, they said, look, we're just going to play six-minute quarter, and it's going to be a running clock. I've seen them do that uh, in West Virginia a lot because they don't have a running clock rule until the fourth quarter. Rock Hill has it at the Ironton 47. Here's a handoff, and Connor Blagg. He had a new quarterback in there as well, Eli Hamlin, sophomore. Carmen makes the stop. And a loss of two, second down. Let's see, uh, some new players in there for Ironton as well. Defensively, uh, Ethan Hellyer is in. Let's see, Tyler Carmen. Here comes Morgan Glykoff. First time we've seen him in a few weeks. Good to see him back in there. Second down and 12, and the handoff goes to Jackson Rose, who tries to run right side, and he's brought down for a loss. Tyler Carmen. Tyler's mad he fumbled that ball. He's made two pretty good tackles here. Um, Ethan Sutton is in as a linebacker. Here comes Darren Harvey replacing Ethan Sutton. 340 left. Third down and 15 for Rock Hill. James Shope has checked in for the Tigers on the defensive line. Third down and long. And the handoff. Oh, no, there's a face mask. Yep, that's three flags. That's probably going to be a 15-yard face mask. Sam Rusk. On the run, Sam yeah. Rusk, uh, Jr. Yeah, Ethan Hellyer getting that hand in there. So it'll be a 15-yard penalty against the Tigers. All right, so they'll mark it ahead. Well, just five yards? You're trying to count that 15. Well, should be 39. <laughs> down to the 36. 36. Yeah. So it is a first down for Rock Hill. 2.27 to go. Got uh, another substitution for the Fighting Tigers defensively. Mason Hitchler will check in. Braden Baker puts him in position, and Baker backs up to safety. All right, it's Eli Hamlin under center, takes the snap and hands off on the right side to Jackson Rose. Rose pushes forward across the 35 and gets down to about the 33-yard line. Coach is trying to shuffle players on and off the field as quickly as possible. Sutton back in for the Tigers. You had three new players checking in for Rock Hill. Tyson Cox will go to the Ironton sidelines, a minute 44 to go. 42 to nothing, fighting Tigers with the lead. Braden Barber checks in, and here comes Aiden Hensley. Also on the field, Jacob Jenkins. Here's a handoff to the fullback. 15. Philip Bowman and Jacob Jenkins on the tackle. Bryson Hayes is now in on the defensive line. 108 to go. A 
72 checking in. I do not have a 72 for Rock Hill. He's tall. He's a big dude. <laughs> big fella. 48 seconds to go. This will probably be the final play of the game. Eli Hamlin with a T formation behind him. Takes the snap, hands off to Rose again. Jackson Rose running up the middle, and he's brought down by, again, a host of black jerseys. Hellier leading the charge for the Tigers, as was Phil Bowman. Clock down to 22 seconds. Rock Hill will not run another play. Final score, Ironton 42, Rock Hill 0. Tigers with another win, and they have won their 30th consecutive OVC game. Improved to six and one on the season. Rock Hill falls to two and five. Back after this timeout, Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and MyTown TV. We're not. It's tailgate time in the bluegrass. Uncle, Uncle Rick, Rick, what, what are, are you doing? doing? I'm getting ready to make my announcing debut. And I believe that's football time in the bluegrass. But you can believe this. Clark's has everything you need for a winning tailgate. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free boneless Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. For over 60 years, Ashland Office Supply has been your locally owned office supply shop. From office supplies to furniture, they have set their sights on the postseason. 42-0 with the win over Rock Hill. Rock Hill falls to two and five. They've lost four straight. Fighting Tigers are now six and one with three games to go. This game was um, a quick second half, very quick second half, uh, six minute fourth quarter, but Ironton had the lead uh, big time in the uh, first half at halftime. So uh, kind of eyeballing down there, we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead, let's go down to Kevin right now. He's down there with Trevin Pendleton. Thank you, Jason. Coach, 42-0. Uh, obviously, in, 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 the, in this type of game, you want to take care of mistakes and just try to play sound, fundamental football. What did you take from your team uh, after tonight? Um, you know, you, you, you try to find good and bad and everything, but, uh, you know, obviously uh, I, they're just – we're missing something. I don't know what it is yet, but, uh, you know, it's something with the end and it starts with us as a coaching staff and something just a little bit off. We're not clicking yet, but uh, – you know, you see it in spurts, you just don't see it in the consistency yet. So um, we got to find that, and, uh, you know, it's back to the drawing board, and hopefully we can find that this week. Yeah, Rock Hill a couple times rushed, was able to rush five or six and kind of disrupt you for a couple of plays, but then they went back to rushing four, and you found success with a couple long touchdown plays. Yeah, but, you know, we got to get, uh, you know, our quick game's got to get better, something that we've been working hard on. Uh, the opportunity didn't really present itself to run it tonight, but, uh, you know, we got to get better, and we understand that, we know that, so uh, – back to the drawing board and uh, you know hopefully that's what we're gonna do this week and homecoming night uh, just quickly about the fan turnout I mean you guys had people in the end zone again you're playing a local team but again the fan support everybody came out tonight uh, perfect night for football yeah there's a uh, honestly there's no better place for football than uh than here at Tanks Memorial Stadium and you know in the heart of Ironton uh, you know Southern Ohio uh, I tell people all the time it's a hidden gem I mean uh, you know these people this is what they they love uh, and, you know, they really come out, and our, it makes a fun atmosphere for our kids. It's a fun atmosphere to coach in. So we appreciate them, and we appreciate all the support. And uh, hopefully we can get better and put a better product each and every week out on the field. So, uh, you know, that, that's our plan, and our kids are working hard at it. So hopefully uh, that, that stuff comes to fruition here. Coach, uh, stay healthy, get healthy, and we'll see you next week. That's right. Go Tigers.
All right, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. It's again, 42 nothing final score. Fighting Tigers get the win. We'll be back after this timeout on Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and My Town TV. You're wondering why you struggle to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. Ashland Office Supply has been your locally owned office supply shop. From office supplies to furniture, they have everything you need to keep your business running smoothly. Shop online at ashlandoffice.com. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollux Jewelers. Kill still to come. We'll recap the second half tonight. We'll have a look at scores. We'll have stats. And we'll take a look ahead to next week. Plus, our Monroe's Frame Collision Big Collision of the night. That's still to come. 42-0 your final. Ironton wins it on Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and MyTown TV. to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. Ironton wins it over Rock Hill. Let's recap the second half quickly. Uh, Ironton was up 35-0 at the half, so we had a running clock in the second half. Rock Hill got the ball to start the second half. They went three and out, giving the ball to the Tigers at the Redmond 39. Four plays later, they're in the end zone for the final time tonight. Braden Shrek with an eight-yard touchdown pass to Bailey Thacker. Extra point kick by David Fields made it 42 to nothing at the 5:30 mark. Four plays, 39 yards, 3:18 off the clock. Rock Hill goes three and out the next series. First play from scrimmage though for the Tigers, a fumble recovered by Rock Hill. We moved into the fourth quarter, and at that point, the officials said we are playing um, a running clock six-minute quarter in the fourth. So that's what they did, and Rock Hill ran out the final 5:15 in six plays and did not find the end zone, and Ironton gets the win 42 to nothing tonight over the Rock Hill Redmen. Back after this timeout with more from Tanks Memorial Stadium on Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and MyTown TV. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, or a late night snack on the way home, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Free bread. Refuel. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollux Jewelers, and this uh, school season, we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you and any of your gift-giving needs, and uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. <music>
Uncle Rick, what are you doing? You're wondering why you struggle to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. years, Ashland Office Supply has been your locally owned office supply shop. From office supplies to furniture, they have everything you need to keep your business running smoothly. Shop online at ashlandoffice.com. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock's Jewelers and this uh, school season we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you and any of your gift giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm dreaming. Of what? Fall on the bluegrass, days at the track, mats on the 50 yard line. Well, you want to be at the 50 instead of on the 50. That could be dangerous. But to complete your day, you can count on Clark's Pump and Shop. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. over Rock Hill. Up next, it's a road trip to Rock Hill next week for the Fighting Tigers. Rock Hill staying in conference play next week as they will play at home against Gallia Academy. Ironton now leads the overall series between the two schools 12 to nothing. And that's how it will uh, be for a while. Ironton out of the OVC after this year. So this is the last time these two teams will play at least for a while. Let's, uh, while Kevin adds up the numbers, let's take a look at from sco some scores. We still have to get uh, score stats and our Monroe's Frame and Collision, big collision of the game. Uh, Portsmouth beats Chesapeake 28-6. to That is now a final score. Fairland over South Point 35-14. to That is a fourth quarter score. Uh, Jackson over Miami Trace 42-13. to I believe that one's gone final. Eastern beat Sims Valley 49 to nothing. Portsmouth West over Valley 41 to 7. So Colgrove and Gallia Academy, the Blue Devils beat the Hornets 28 to 12. Ironton will go to Colgrove next week in an OVC matchup. And uh, the Fighting Tigers again get the win tonight 42 to nothing over Rock Hill. All right, uh, we're going to step aside. When we come back, we'll have a look at final numbers from tonight's game with the Fighting Tigers winning by 42 over the Redmen on Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and MyTown TV.
Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. For over 60 years, Ashland Office Supply has been your locally owned office supply shop. From office supplies to furniture, they have everything you need to keep your business running smoothly. Shop online at ashlandoffice.com. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. 3 nothing. they now lead the Pittsburgh Pirates 4-3, so that's not good. The Cubs and the Brewers, no score in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Brewers have the bases loaded with nobody out, so let's hope the Cubs lose and the Reds continue to win and sweep the weekend series with the Cardinals. 42-0, our final here. Ironton gets the win over Rock Hill. Jason Filiot, Kevin Anthony along with you. And got those numbers over there? Let me turn you up you so go. you can answer that. Yes. <laughs> you got put, it? Put the wireless mic away. I'm, I'm ready to go. All I, right. I think so. Well, the second half, not much. You know, Shrek, one for two passing in that second half, eight yards. It was an eight-yard touchdown strike to Bailey Thacker. Copas had two runs for 36. Carmen had one carry for five, but he fumbled. Thacker had that one catch for eight. So the Tigers with 49 yards in uh, the second half because of the shortened six-minute uh, six mm -hmm. second half. So, again, nothing uh, great. 351 total yards on the night for the Fighting Tigers. In that first half, you saw Bailey Thacker uh, throw for eight for 11, four on 64, 52, 57, and 15. Those were his touchdown passes. He ran the ball three times for negative two. Zane Williams had seven carries for 54, including a nine-yard touchdown run. As we said, Copas had three carries in that first half for 12, and he also had two in the second half. So Copas with 48 yards in the, in the game. Sean Terry had one, one carry for five. Caden Edwards, one carry for 14. Connor Lowe, one carry for 14. Also Connor Lowe, one, one catch for 21. Tyler Roach had two catches for 29. Pittman, Eris. Uh, two catches for 52, or excuse me, two catches for 59, including a 52-yard touchdown uh, catch. Shrek had one catch for 57. That also was a touchdown catch. And again, Zane Williams had one catch for 15. That was a touchdown catch. For Rock Hill, Dylan, uh, Dalen Cox threw the ball one time, did not complete a pass. Also uh, ran the ball in this second half for one time. So overall, in that second half, Giles uh, clutters, Anthony Stamper, uh, Brad Stamper, Jackson Rose, Dalen Cox, as well as Connor Black in that shortened second half all carried the ball uh, eight, well, let's call it nine times, and tally that up for two yards. That was in the second half. So total yards, 48, 40 yards. That's right, 4 -oh, 40 yards in the game for Rock Hill. That's uh, 26 carries, tallying 40 yards. And if Luke has his, no, Luke left. Where did Luke go? Where did Luke go? Wow. He's out on the well, deck. Well, he was my calculator guy, so he, he told me 1.5. He just okay. figured in his head. So, okay. so, hey, Kevin, that's 1.5 yards per carry. Tigers with the defense. 351 total for the Tigers, 40 for Rock Hill. And that's just simply talking to Coach at the end of the game. Just, you know, he's just trying to get better every game. He didn't like, you know, love what he saw. You still got things to work on, this and that, timing, getting the ball out quicker. And, again, that will be the battle cry for the next – you know, for the rest of the regular season, uh, along with trying to win the OBC title. And, again, get healthy and stay healthy. Yep. 42 nothing, and Ironton's healthy out of this one. Uh, so we'll take a timeout. We'll come back, and it's time to give our Monroe's frame and collision. Big collision of the night. We've got three nominees. That's right. Who will drum roll? Who we'll, will we'll figure that out. And, Where's uh, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. We'll figure it out during the break, and, uh, and we'll tell you who it is. After the timeout, 42 nothing. your final. Fox Sports 1420 and iHeartRadio and My Town TV.
We're not changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. Every growth number that we have is another person that we helped. People out in the world today need help, and that's what we're there for. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, or a late night snack on the way home. No one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Free bread. Refuel. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock's Jewelers, and this uh, school season, we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift-giving needs, and uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. <music> Fighting Tigers win it tonight over Rock Hill, 42 to nothing. Running clock in the second half, six minute fourth quarter. And I uh, got out of here quickly in the second half. But the Fighting Tigers get the win. Up next, Colgrove next week at Patterson Field. Tigers will make that short drive to uh, Dawson Bryan High School and take on the Hornets. Rock Hill will be at home playing Gallia Academy, who got a win tonight over the aforementioned Colgrove Hornets. Time to give our Monroe's Frame and Collision Big Collision of the Night Award. We had three nominees, Tyler Carmen, first quarter kickoff, uh, Noah Patterson in the second quarter. He had a big hit down here, and then Zane Williams also on a kick return in the second quarter. And again, uh, and, and pay homage to Austin Bump. He was he, yeah, he was, he was everywhere. He was everywhere yeah. tonight. But, uh, yeah, th those three. Uh, but, again, uh, unfortunate, the fumble of Tyler Carmen, but, of course, he – Playing a little extra in defense there <laughs> toward the end of the game. A little frustrated there, but uh, I think we, we like Tyler Carmen. I'm going to give it to Tyler Carmen. Tyler Carmen with that uh, big hit early on in the first quarter on the kickoff, and he gets the Monroe's Frame and Collision big collision of the night. So congratulations to him. He'll get that T-shirt from Monroe's Frame and Collision. That will wrap things up from Tanks Memorial Stadium. No Buckeye game tomorrow, but we do have Ohio College football today, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And uh, we're back next Friday from Colgrove, Patterson Field, for the Fighting Tigers and the Colgrove Hornets. Congratulations to the homecoming queen. I'm trying to remember her name. And I didn't write it down. Uh, not so. But I did. And Lainey Dressel. And Lainey Dressel was our screen doctor's student athlete of the week. We do that at halftime and we will for the remainder of the season and postseason as well. Uh, so that, that'll wrap it up. We're back at it again next Friday from Colgrove for Kevin Anthony for uh, all the My Town TV folks. We appreciate you tuning in and watching and listening wherever you may be, however you may be listening watching. 
I'm Jason Filia saying once again the final score, Ironton 42, Cole Grove 0. Until next Friday when we come to you from Dawson Bryan High School, we thank you for listening. Good night from Tanks Memorial Stadium.